Hi, this is Kerry with Learn Da Vinci Resolve, and we are coming up on a very important event. This Monday, uh, that would be, um, oh, let me do the math on this, 5, 6, 7, 8, April 8th, 2019, Black Magic Design is going to announce Da Vinci Resolve 16. What's in it? Right now, we have no idea. Uh, when it came to 15, and uh, one of the things that I had asked for was audio noise reduction. Every other program has it. They put it in there. They integrated Fusion into DaVinci Resolve. They added tons and tons of features to it uh, over the past year. So what's left to add into 16? Well, certainly some people think that the editing tools could be improved. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, there's things that you can do in Avid or Premiere a little easier than you can do in Resolve. So there's certainly some user interface things that could be improved. The Fusion integration they said would take a while before it was kind of fully up to snuff. It does crash a lot right now. So performance improvements, stability improvements, and making the Fusion experience a little bit better would be nice. Uh, I'm starting to use more and more Fusion, so any improvements there would be welcome. On the audio side, I, I don't know. I'm not an audio person. I don't deal with surround sound and things like that, so I really can't say anything that's missing or incomplete from the Fairlight side, and I certainly can't compare it to anything else because I, I don't do that. Uh, the audio noise reduction could be improved a little bit. It's pretty darn good, but it could be improved a little bit. On the editing side, the stabilizer that's on the color page could stand to be improved a little bit. It's sometimes a little better if you do the, your stabilization in Fusion than doing it on the color page. So hopefully we can see some improvements there. I would really like to see the ability to rearrange the panels, uh, especially when you're using two or three monitors. Right now it's it's set, it is what it is, and I don't really like the layout when I'm on two, two screens. Um, I don't do it very often, but when I'm on my primary work machine doing a bigger project, I do have two screens, and I just don't really like the experience. So there's certainly some things that could be improved on the dual monitor setup. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, you know, if you go to the Blackmagic forums, which I highly recommend everybody do, get an account on there and participate, the feature request list for 16 is probably over 100 pages long. I mean, a lot of it is discussing certain things and sometimes there's some repetition, but there are some really good things in there that people are asking for. So we'll see how much they can actually integrate into 16. As far as myself, again, some other things would be, um, well, let's see. Um, I don't know, I'm pretty pretty happy with DaVinci Resolve right now. It's been a, a fantastic tool. Uh, like I said, things that improve the editing experience would be nice. There are playback issues depending on what your page you're on. If you're on the edit page, things seem to play back smoother than when you're on the color page or in, when you're in Fairlight or when you're in Fusion. So there's some things that go on there that would be nice if it was consistent playback on all the different things. One thing that I have found to be a problem is when I'm working on a media clip in Fusion, there's no audio. So trying to sync things up to a music track or dialogue or anything is pretty well impossible because there's no audio playback when you're on the Fusion page. So to me, that would be a very big logical extension of things to add in 16. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, the sometimes the workflow process can be a little weird. Uh, if you want to color grade a clip and then take it into Fusion, there really isn't a clean way of doing it. There's workarounds, don't get me wrong, there are some workarounds, but it's just not clean. 
the workflow goes media edit fusion color deploy and that's how things run through the system so color correcting comes after your visual effects and sometimes that's a problem sometimes it just doesn't you don't want to work that way so the the right way to do it is then do your color correction in fusion well it's not as clean it's not as easy to use as doing it on the color page so there's some little things like that um, i'm just starting to play around with aces workflow and i find that going into fusion and then coming back out uh, things just don't look right uh, i have to try and uh, convert to Rec 709 and it still doesn't look quite right so I don't know if that's me I don't know if it's something with that workflow that's not right so um, anything that improves that ACES workflow I think is going to be big and I'll have a video coming up soon on what ACES is why you should know about it and why you should care or not care about ACES it's a kind of a cool thing it's not for everybody but it can for some people really improve the workflow process. So we'll talk about that in another video. So there's not a lot of things that I'm really griping about right now in Fusion or in Resolve other than the things I've just mentioned. So I'm gonna be very curious as to what is going to be in 16 that is really going to wow me. And I'm guessing there's gonna be some big surprises that are gonna blow me away just like they do every single year and it just gets better and better and better which is why I love Resolve it is just the development track is so fast there's so many new things every year and it's not just once a year it's throughout the year they add more and more and more features to it so I'm very excited to see what's in Resolve 16 so in the comments tell me what you'd like to see in Resolve 16 and we're only two days away so well Saturday Sunday and then Monday it's Friday evening right now when I'm recording this so uh, over the weekend comment below and let me know what you'd like to see in Resolve 16 I think it'll be interesting as a community to hear what each other thinks and you know how other people are affected by different things within the DaVinci environment so that's it for tonight I will catch you guys on Monday for sure with a breakdown on what's new in DaVinci Resolve 16. So look for that. It'll be Monday evening because it's gonna, I have to learn it and figure it out. I've gotta get a copy of the beta and everything assuming they release a beta on Monday, which they've always done. So we'll see if I can get a beta of it on Monday, then we'll be talking about it, maybe even live if we can on Monday night. So stay tuned for that. If you like these videos, be sure and subscribe, hit that like icon, and be sure and click the bell icon to be notified every time I put out new videos like the upcoming What's New in DaVinci Resolve 16. If you don't like them, that's all right. Click the dislike, but I'd appreciate if you told me what you didn't like so I can continue to improve these videos. That's it for me. This is Carrie with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and I'm going to catch you guys in a couple days. Bye-bye.